Hi, my name is Stefan and this is the BBU bus. So as we start our little bus tour, I want to talk about my shower really quickly. It is a 24 by 24 inch shower pan, so it is really tight in there. Not so tight that it's not possible to shower, but it's not somewhere where you spend 20 minutes, half an hour just standing and soaking, because that it just doesn't work that way. And that's part of bus life, you know? So I have a tiny shower, little shower head that comes off as a wand so I can direct the water where I need it to because I can't move as much as a normal shower. And then down here at the bottom of the shower is where I keep my Kildwick composting toilet. Now, open it up, you have a composting toilet that splits the, the, the liquids front ways, solids back ways, and then you take care of it as any other composting toilet would. Um, I've been stoked with this unit. I take it out of the shower when I shower, and it just it just fits my space really well. And that's why I, go, I went with the Kildwick toilets because the elegance that they craft these with matched what I was trying to go for in my space. So that's why I chose that toilet. So that's my bathroom. Now let's move towards the kitchen. This is my sink and my faucet. This faucet is actually pretty unique in that it has three, three braided hose inserts from the bottom. One for hot water, one for cold water, and then a third for filtered water. And that runs off of a second tap right here. Now the filtered water of course runs through a filter that's underneath my sink. That way I don't have to be really particular about the water that goes into my water tank because even if it's from a garden hose, I will filter it here before it comes out and goes into my cooking dishes or my cups for drinking or whatever. So that's a pretty fun faucet, has a lot of versatility but still looks great in the space and it's pretty elegant. Um, we handmade a little a little macrame fruit hammock for storing my fruit up there. Um, here are some of my drawers and organization. There's my silverware there. Here's my spices and some other silverware. This is where I keep my plates, bowls, cups. And then the bottom one is some food storage. Of course I had to utilize the little bit of extra storage here in front of the sink so I usually will keep my soap brush in there when I'm driving so I'll toss those in there. And then I have this vertical pantry pullout for a bunch of big bulk food storage. Under the sink is where my trash can lives, as well as some soaps and cleaning supplies and my dish drying rack. Under my oven, I have a really big drawer that goes way back in there. And this is where I keep my pots and pans, as well as my knife roll for my fancier knives. And then this one is a really short and stubby drawer because the wheel well is actually back there. So this is as high as the wheel well goes, so I had a 10 inch drawer that I could put right here, so I store some other you know, bread making stuff and Tupperwares and towels in there. And this is the most unfinished uh, cabinet in the bus, but I store extra bulk food that I don't have in my pantry, as well as some sheet pans and some other uh, cooking accessories in there. Um, here's my the Furion oven with my three burners up top, as well as the oven cooking space down below. I get a lot of responses, and I'd go as far as to say criticism online about people saying, why did you put your oven so close to your bed? It, it was initially a design choice because I wanted to keep my water together and my propane together instead of switching them alternating, you know? So it made sense when I was building it. Now that I've been using it for two months, it makes even more sense. When I wash dishes, you get water and splash and soap and, and gunk, not only in the sink, but like next to the sink and around the sink. When I cook, I really don't make a mess. So I don't know why people are so um, anxious or paranoid about me getting bacon grease on my pillow or what have you. At a first glance, I can understand how you may be concerned with the location here because you're next to your bed and your blankets and whatever, maybe fire hazard. That would take an extreme amount of carelessness to actually 
be an issue. But when it comes to the cooking side, cook carefully, you know, be intentional about what you're doing and you're gonna not gonna have a problem. You gotta be so intentional about everything in this kind of space that, you know, I haven't run into any issues with that. But that's just a side note based on um, some feedback that I've gotten from the community. Um, anyways, let's move on from the kitchen back towards the bed. Here is my bed. It is a full size mattress. I wanted to go with a standard dimension mattress. That way, if I wanna switch out my mattress at some point, I can totally do so. I can take it out of the bus, put a new one in there, easy peasy. Also, it's cheaper to go for a standard mattress rather than getting custom mattresses or trying to do it yourself and having shady mattresses. Up there, I have two cabinets. That's where I keep all my clothes. And then I have a little bit more clothing in here. And then I hang my laundry in this one down here. This is my fridge drawer that I was talking about earlier. So right now, that cannot go anywhere unless I push that button. Now it'll come out. Put that back in just to lock it. I took the back of this seat area. It was this weird trapezoid shape because I wanted I didn't want straight back seats. I wanted to tilt them a little bit just for added comfort. So I made this weird trapezoid space. So I could, I built myself a trapezoid drawer with two slots in it and I lined it with felt so that it would keep dust and particles down. And this is where I store my laptop and my iPad is also back here. For now, I have a bunch of playing cards down here just for fun. Um, but inside of this closet is an outlet and in the outlet I have a laptop charging block and I route that through the back of the seat and into this drawer so that I can plug in my laptop, leave it in this drawer and it's charging even in the drawer when I'm driving, when I'm hanging out. That way I can charge my stuff and it's not out in my space. So that's been a super slick little drawer. I've got a lot of fun feedback about that. People love this thing. Um, it looks good and it works really well. So I've been stoked about that. Speaking of storage solutions, these seats of course open up. I can store a lot of just stuff down there. It's a large volume storage and I really don't access a lot of the stuff that's in there on a regular basis. So that's been really nice to be able to say, oh, don't use that often, chuck it under the chair. The same is true for the chair up front. That opens up from the bottom, but it also has a door in the front end that I can crack open and then I can put some taller stuff in here. So tripod, camping chairs, uh, extra pairs of shoes, that kind of stuff. I also don't access this storage a lot, but it's gonna be nice to have as I go down the road. Uh, and the last storage bit was one of the more difficult ones. This being a Ford built chassis, the front end of the bus was just like a Ford van. So I had the challenge of building a storage unit that fits the three dimensional space of a van style front, but still making it match the rest of the bus. So I built this crazy kind of wonky unit that comes out here. There's some open storage out here for when I'm driving and I want to keep a water bottle or gum or my mask uh, right there next to me. And then this door hides where I keep all my shoes. So I have a bunch of pairs of shoes in here and that also goes all the way around here to the side. Up here above the driver's zone, I have a couple more storage spots. There's this medicine cabinet kind of spot where I keep a couple of various things. Um, some of my hiking accessories and uh, my laundry coins and then up here I have just some open storage baskets and this has been really nice because I have my little vacuum over here I have some camera accessories my books that I'm reading um, Some little knickknacks trinkets and I keep my speaker up here as well, and that's been Great to have just easy access dip into there and grab stuff when I need it. I do have this open shelf above my windows I didn't want to put a rail here because as soon as you close that in and make it able to keep stuff there while you're driving, then stuff will stay there forever. And I don't want to live in a space where there's things out all the time. I want things to have a home and go back to where they belong. So when I'm parked for a week, yeah, I'll put a cup up here. I'll put a hat up here. You know, I'll kind of maybe I'll keep my camera up there while I'm doing stuff. But that way, every time I drive, I've got to clean up. So it's kind of this uh, mental thing that I've put myself in so that I keep my space looking nice.
Now if we go outside, we'll start with some of the, the, the nitty gritty parts of the outside tour. Um, here for my water system, I have a gravity feed inlet that fills my 40 gallon water tank that is underneath the bed. And then I have a city water inlet and when I'm parked in a stationary spot where I have a hose, that's where I keep that water coming in. That way I don't gotta use my pump, I don't gotta fill my tank, this and that, back and forth. Water comes straight in from here, fills my sink, runs my shower. Now taking a look at the back of the bus and in the uh, garage space, if you will, um, you will see what's going on underneath my bed. Now, for reference, here's my fridge. That is what pulls out into the space, so that occupies a lot of my space. Farther up in there, in this very far corner, that is where my diesel heater is, and that goes right through the wall next to the fridge and pumps heat into the, into the cabin when it's cold and not, uh, during winter. And this box here is my battery box. I have my batteries and my inverter and my DC to DC charger, my solar charge controller, some breakers, all my fuses, a master switch, and then here is my breaker, panel, and fuse box combined into one, which has been a fantastic unit. Um, I can control all my breakers and then also access all my fuses on the far side of this one panel, which has been really handy. Uh, that leaves me all this space for general storage. It's a mess right now, but I have a bunch of tool bags so I can fix stuff on the fly. I've got a long board, some engine fluids, um, tire, tire pressure, filler upper, um, air pump, and a jack, as well as some storage here. This is where I keep all my backpacking goods. So my backpacking backpack, my tent, hammock, camera bag, and then this box under here is protecting my water tank and my pump and my accumulator tank are in front of here and then that runs to the rest of the bus. And also right here on the back corner of the bus you'll see this ladder. I welded this out of aluminum and I also welded the roof deck out of aluminum and I want to take you up there so we can uh, see what I got up there. So now I'm up on the roof deck. This space has been super fun to use when we're out camping in the forest, have some friends along. We throw out like picnic blankets and bring out some pillows and then you can just lounge up here. Super great space. Would also be a good storage and transportation spot if I needed to add a bunch of extra goods. Just strap them down to the roof. I got plenty of anchor points. So this roof deck has been great. And then in front of the roof deck is where the solar is. And that, I tell you, my solar cranks. And it's been an amazing, amazing set of panels to keep my batteries topped up. I haven't had a problem since day one. I've been living in here for about two months now, but I'm here to talk about my conversion process, how I did it, what I like about it, and why I'm living here in the bus. I first got into van life, bus life, several years ago when four friends and myself spent a week in Iceland in a small Volkswagen camper van. The five of us fit in a tiny vehicle. We made it work for six days and it was an amazing experience. Prior to that, I didn't think that you could really live out of a vehicle or spend that much time on the road. A couple years later, as I was nearing the end of my college experience, I spent every class period on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and auction sites looking for a bus. At that time, I did not know what to expect. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I thought in my head that I wanted to build a bus. So at some point I bought a bus. It was, I was super uneducated and inexperienced. I didn't know what I was looking for, but I bought one and took it home. I still had six months left in college. So I was a full-time student for the first six months of my build. But I bought the bus, I brought it home, I started a demo and 18 months later, here it is. It took me a long time, it took me a lot of research because there were certain things that I wanted in here that I couldn't find anywhere else. So it was about researching methods and materials used in different applications and then figuring out ways that I could transfer those and use them here in my space. One of my main goals when I was building this space was to not look and feel like I'm living in a vehicle. I really wanted to emphasize and and, and strive for a feeling of like, this is a home. So that meant certain accessories needed to look and feel and function like normal household things, like light switches, wall outlets, sinks, faucets, showers. Like I didn't want to feel like I'm 
living on the road while living on the road, if that makes sense. So there's certain things like that that heavily influence the design choices as well as the materials and the supply choices that I use here in the bus. That's a little bit about how I got into the bus situation. Um, like I said, my build process took 18 months. The first six months I was still in school, so that was you know a couple hours a week. Um, but from then on, during COVID, I was at home and I was working on the bus. Um, I'll share a little bit about the, the nitty gritty stats with you about what's going on here. Um, I have 500 watts of solar on my roof and that goes into a 300 amp hour lithium battery bank that lives underneath the bed. Uh, I wanted to build in certain levels of redundancy into my electrical system, so I bought an inverter charger combo so that if and when I'm at an RV park or at a friend's house or anywhere with an extension cord to an outlet, I could plug in and charge my batteries. So far, I have not needed to do that a single time. My solar has kept my batteries topped up and the energy draw of my uh, accessories in the bus has been so low that my batteries haven't gotten below 75%. I have a 2000 watt inverter charger that powers my 110 accessories in the bus, whether that's charging a laptop or a little blender or a, uh, a water cooker. Um, I like to use my electricity before I use my non-renewable resources like my propane system. Underneath the bus, I have an eight gallon propane tank mounted. It is a sideways horizontal tank because I don't have the clearance underneath to put the standard five gallon, 20 pound tanks. Uh, so I bought an expensive tank, I put it in there, I filled it up in December and it is June right now. And as far as I know, it still reads at three quarter full. And I've been showering every day and I've been cooking every day. Not since December, only in the last two months I've been doing that. But we took a trip in December with four of us and we've took a couple of trips between then and when I moved in, but my propane has been lasting a long time. But the things that go on off of propane are my stove. I have a Furion 17 inch range. So that's the stove top combo with three burners as well as a 17 inch oven underneath. And I have a water heater that lives underneath my kitchen counter and that is powered by propane as well, supplying my sink with hot water as well as my shower. I had to teach myself a lot of new skills during this build process and one of my favorite ones was learning how to sew. After spending months and months of like cutting and grinding metal and welding and doing these really nasty chores, going inside and then using soft and, and pliable materials and these textiles to, to create these warm and comforting objects that we're going to go in the bus and turn it from a, like a hard cold space to you know something comfortable and something something enjoyable to be in that process was very satisfying for me I hand sewed all my curtains they have two layers there's this white layer here that lets light in but not eyes so people can't see in like this and then I can also unclip these magnets right here unroll heavier darker layer and that'll keep light and heat out even better i can also roll up this white layer inside the roll and then have the curtains completely up and my windows open i can also take it completely off just like that they're up there attached with magnets so that if i want to wash them run them through the laundry i can do that no problem so my curtains were super fun to make i also handmade the cushions that are on my bench seats that was a pretty straightforward process as well just had to learn how to make a box cushion shape and throw a little zipper line in there so those two I can also remove and wash and then you cut a chunk of foam and now you have high quality custom made fabrics and textiles that fill your space and make it feel really comfortable so that was one of my favorite processes I also loved working with the electrical I had absolutely no electrical experience before this adventure but by now, I feel very confident in being able to construct a functional and ergonomic electrical system. Um, you'll see that I have some buttons in the edge of my counter. Um, those are all electronic buttons that control various accessories between my water pump. I have a solenoid on my propane tank. That way I'm not always pushing pressurized gas into the bus. So right now my stove won't turn on 
unless I open up that solenoid by pushing one of these buttons and then I'll have propane in here. Um, so that's been a very good uh, use of some electrical accessories. I have a couple more buttons. One goes to my gray water tank drain solenoid. So from in here, I can turn on that button and my gray water tank will drain. And then the last is a fridge lock. My fridge drawer orientation is front to back. So as you can imagine, if I brake really hard while I'm driving, the fridge will fly forward. So a lot of people will put a little like bathroom stall style little latch lock on the front or something like that. I had spent too much time on the aesthetic in here, so I didn't want to do that. So I found a, an electrically powered deadbolt kind of lock that they use in apartment style buildings, you know, where you scan your, your, your key and it goes, pulls up the deadbolt and your door can open. I put one of those in the fridge drawer underneath and powered that with one of the buttons. So now my fridge drawer is locked all the time unless I open up that deadbolt by pushing a button. And that is another great use of those electrical accessories. The last thing that I'm really excited about in this space is how I was able to emphasize and utilize storage as best as I felt possible. Yeah, I have 15 feet front to back of living space and I've fit a full functional shower, a household style sink, a stove, an oven, a full size mattress and bed, a fridge, a hanging storage closet for hanging clothes like jackets and shirts, and this dinette area where you can seat two people and eat comfortably, or you can even drop this table down and make it a bed to fit one extra person if you needed to. So I feel great about how I've made, managed to utilize storage as best as possible. I've really had no problems with, you know, where do I put things, you know. Um, so that's been a very successful use of my space and how I managed to best utilize little nooks and crannies that can always fit something in there. And that is it for the tour of the BB bus. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me on all platforms, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube as BB a bus. Um, go ahead and give me a follow if you liked the bus and want to follow along on my adventures on the road. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you out there. Bye.